Hi, this is Michael Altos. We're continuing our discussion of things pertaining to blood. This is recording part two. Now let's talk about immunity, immunity and allergy. There are lots of different ways of classifying and categorizing immunity. For example, we can talk about innate immunity, which is the actions of your white blood cells, your stomach acid, digestive enzymes, your skin's impermeability to pathogens. All of this is sort of nonspecific protective mechanisms that the body has. We also have acquired immunity, which are the immune responses that the body learns in response to prior exposures to pathogens. <clears throat> this can be further subdivided into humoral immunity or the B-cell immunity. These are the lymphocytes which create circulating antibodies that go through the bloodstream. There's also cell-mediated immunity or T-cell immunity. These are specific cells that are crafted in order to destroy a foreign agent. A little vocabulary. An antigen is a molecule which triggers formation of acquired immunity. Antigen is a combination of two words, antibody generator. <clears throat> Examples of antigens are polypeptides or macromolecules, latex, colloid volume expanders, neuromuscular blocking agents. All of these can be antigens. Interestingly, most of the drugs that people can be allergic to are not antigens because they aren't large enough. They are called haptins. They are small substances, small molecules. They then bind to a larger molecule which presents the haptin to the immune species, to the immune cell, in order to create the antigen. So for example, antibiotics, antibiotics and most of the other drugs we use are small molecules. They aren't actually antigens, they are haptins. An antibody is an immune globulin. It's a protein which is designed to bind to a specific antigen. There are five different classes of antibodies. Ig stands for immunoglobulin, so there's IgM, G, A, D, and E. Antibodies bind to the antigen when they occur in the body, and they become activated. The antibody becomes activated. This causes lymphocytes to proliferate, more antibodies to be secreted, the mast cells degranulate and release their um, chemicals, the complement system gets activated, and this leads to an immune reaction. This picture here shows an antigen and then some antibodies recognizing and binding to the antigens. I mentioned complement a moment ago. Complement is a system of proteins that are in the blood which can detect and bind to antibodies that have bound to antigens. So these bound antibodies would then be detected by complement, and then destruction would occur in order to get rid of these pathogens. Tolerance is the idea that the body can recognize its own tissues as self, and the body tries to not form antibodies against its own antigens. If tolerance fails, patients can develop autoimmune diseases where the body forms antibodies against its own tissues. And there are very many different kinds of autoimmune diseases like rheumatic fever, lupus, myasthenia gravis. Many people think that even type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease in which the beta cells have been attacked by the body. Immunization is the process by which, we, by which we deliberately inject antigens. They could be the organism that's been inactivated, or they could be dead organism that's ground up. And by injecting them, it creates antibodies against the organism without causing an infection from the organism. Thereby, a subsequent exposure to the organism uh, would be safe because the patient has already developed antibodies. We'll take a moment and go through the different types of allergic reactions. An allergic reaction or a hypersensitivity reaction, um, there are four common types that we discussed. The first is a type 1, which is an anaphylactic or an immediate type reaction. These involve IgE antibodies, which bind to the antigen. Usually these antibodies are from mast cells or basophils, and when that happens, the cell releases its internal components, vasoactive mediators like histamine or other substances. <clears throat> Usually, in order for a type 1 reaction to occur, there has to have been a prior antigen exposure because these antibodies need to have been already formed in good numbers. When the patient is re-exposed, these IgE antibodies recognize the antigen. They cross-link and stimulate the mast cells to degranulate. 
within just a couple minutes, depending on whether it's an IV exposure or an oral or a skin exposure, patients will develop all sorts of signs of mast cell degranulation. Urticaria, which is hives, pruritus, which is itching, flushing, swelling, edema, bronchospasm and upper airway edema and hypoxemia. The vasodilation and the capillary permeability can lead to hypotension and even possible circulatory collapse. Bear in mind that patients who have anaphylaxis could extravasate as much as 50% of their intravascular fluid into the extravascular space. And this is because of the capillary permeability caused by vasoactive mediators in the mast cells or basophils. We'll talk a lot more about how to manage this kind of reaction later on. Type 2 reactions are called antibody-mediated or cytotoxic reactions, usually due to IgM or IgG antibodies. They will bind to an antigen or a haptin, which is on the surface of a cell. So here we can see some, some examples. Here's a target cell with its antigens. The IgG binds to it. Complement then finds the bound IgG and activates, leading to destruction of the cell. Or, instead of complement, a T cell called a killer T cell could identify the bound IgG and again lead to destruction of the target cell. Examples of this kind of reaction would be the destruction of blood cells when there's an inca incompatible transfusion and other sorts of drug-induced immune hemolytic anemias or very possibly heparin-induced thrombocytopenia where the platelets become the target cells. A type 3 reaction is called an immune complex reaction. This is where the antigen and the antibody bind together, and then this complex deposits into the microvasculature. Then complement and neutrophils arrive, and we get this clumping which damages the capillaries. Examples of this include um, lupus, post-streptococcal post glomerulonephritis, and other nephritis, vasculitis, and arthritis examples. Some people think that the pulmonary vasoconstriction and pulmonary hypertension that we see with protamine could be due to protamine-mediated uh, type 3 immune complex reactions. A type 4 reaction is called delayed hypersensitivity. These have an onset of 18 to 24 hours before they begin and last for a few days. Here the lymphocytes are binding to specific antigens, and examples of these would be rejection of transplanted tissue, the contact dermatitis that you might see from, say, poison ivy or a metal allergy, and actually the tuberculosis test that we administer. We'll stop the recording here. As always, please let me know if you have any questions.